No messing about, watching episode four of It's a Sin. I love this show so much. There oh my is God, it's on. Richie! It's become a threat to us all. It is a deadly disease and there is no known cure. Is that the BBC? The virus can be passed during sexual intercourse with an infected person. Anyone is this a real advert that was on at the time in the 80s? So far it's been confined to small groups, but it's spreading. So protect yourself. My mother's watching this. And read this leaflet when it arrives. If you ignore AIDS, it could be the death of you. So don't die of ignorance. What? What? I mean, there's using drama to try and convey the seriousness of it. I mean, people have taken similar approaches when it comes to drink driving and even to the harms associated with cigarette smoke. But like explosions, that side of things surely is only just going to fuel the homophobia. So we're a couple of years on. It's been D, all right. He's checking himself for crazy sarcomas. We've talked about Kaposi sarcomas on the last couple of episodes. These are these cancers caused by a virus called HHV8, human herpes virus number eight. Only tends to happen when your immune system is very severely suppressed. They can be found anywhere on the skin, but they can also be found on what we call the mucous membranes that line the inside of our body. So particularly in the mouth, they can be found on the organs, they can be found on the lining of the eyes. So that's showing the extent to which he's obviously checking for those things as somebody that knows that he's got HIV with no real treatment available at the time. If we had heterosexual boys dying in these numbers, the world would have stopped. There'd be uproar. There'd be riots. That's what we're doing on the 25th. Direct action, like they did in America, out on the streets. Oh, don't get yourself in trouble. Princess Di gave a handshake. Can you just do something like that? Do you know the worst thing about it, the absolute worst, it's that every single conversation has to go on and on about AIDS. The Princess Di moment was really, really powerful because up until that point, and still afterwards, obviously, to, to some extent, people felt that they couldn't even touch people that had HIV in case they contracted it. People really didn't understand it and were very, very frightened of it. And it meant that these people that were really unwell, really vulnerable, were also deprived of the basic things that we kind of need as human beings, which is companionship and even a hug every now and then. Can you get a mortgage, though? Are you allowed one as a gay man? Are you homosexual? No. no. Have you ever had an HIV test? No. No. Have you ever shared a bed with another man? No. They never asked. Wow, I didn't know order. that this was actually a and thing. And we'll get rent off these annoying lodges. We'll draw up proper contracts and all that stuff. We'll be ruthless. Obviously today, people can't ask these questions because it is discrimination. They can ask them, I believe, in situations like life insurance, but not just to get a mortgage. And to lie to these questions anyway at the time is it's, it's kind of fraud, isn't it? So no real health care, no real affection because people don't want to give you a hug and no capacity to be able to get a mortgage and buy a house. Ooh, very swish. Can I have a bunk? So I said, if boroughs already have the capacity to walk down, what's the problem? You cannot assume any wisdom on the part of these people, Arthur. And that's the point. Let him finish. The point is, with a system as ramshackle as the IREA, no one knows what's what. The word is an alliance. I've been told an alliance between Tibbet so are these all the closeted politicians with their toy boys would that be the right word companions this program continues to show the amount of secrecy by which people lived their lives at the time thankfully less so now don't be why what's happening no, i'm not allowed to say don't tell me then no I, i'm i'm not allowed to say as a matter of national security just keep the day free hmm? but more importantly i thought you could be nanny tonight can't I be Mellors? I think Nanny's cross with me. Okay. Naughty boy. I just can't help but think of Stephen Fry in all these intellectual roles that I'm used to seeing him in. To hear where he's this like right closeted kinky fella. This is stash of medication. Need to know if you're HIV, so these are all supplements okay, that amoxicillin is an antibiotic to try and prevent certain types of infections. Maybe treat ones that he's got at the same time. Have you been tested for HIV? 
No, but that's not the point. What about AZT? Can I buy that? No, I'm sorry, it's not for sale and it's not a cure. But I'm trying everything. They said eggs help the immune system. They say flaxseed, that's supposed to be good for you. And less thin granules in melted butter. They say it fights HIV. You should be tested. And piss. Everyone says drinking your own piss makes you stronger. Someone said there's this man. He had HIV. And he was cured. He stopped no, 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 no. battery acid. Is that true? Don't. Please don't try that. Please don't try anything dangerous. It's acid. It could hurt you. It could kill you. I mean, your wee is pretty sterile, but it's not exactly going to make you stronger. It's like Popeye when he eats spinach. The important thing that was brought up in that clip is the distinction between HIV and AIDS. Remember, the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, or AIDS. We've kind of moved away from using that term AIDS, but it really was used to define when HIV caused your immune system to be suppressed past a certain point that left you really particularly susceptible to lots of different types of infections. He mentioned a drug called AZT. That was the abbreviation for a drug called Zidovudine, which was the first antiretroviral drug that was created. HIV is something that's called a retrovirus. For those science buffs that are watching this, that means it's a virus made out of RNA. But when it inserts itself into the genome of a host cell, in this case, it's one of your immune cells, it converts it back to DNA that completely disrupts all the genetic material in that cell. And antiretroviral drugs stop that conversion from RNA to DNA. And that's how we, we still today for the most part, treat HIV and keep the virus under control. The exhibition will be visited by the lady. No oh way. God. Timetable says that Maggie's due to arrive at 11 a.m. on the dot. Margaret and I just got Thatcher. Out. Be black. You won't actually be meeting her, Roscoe. You're just there to be visible. Uh, but this could do us both a bit of good. I don't think Mrs. Thatcher's particularly aware of me. But given a slight nudge... All those contacts in France could pay off. A visit to Paris would be nice. Margaret Thatcher was Prime Minister in the 80s, and she was just a notorious homophobe. In particular, she introduced a piece of legislation called Section 28, which banned the teaching about same-sex relationships in schools, anything to do with what they called sort of homosexual propaganda. Everybody terrified that this all of a sudden is going to turn young people gay. It just fueled the shame. I walk in, I report to the office, and I get shown around by Mr. Crane. And these are the pigeonholes. The head likes a memo, so check them every day. But not too often. We know what you're like, you lot. Fiddling with your holes. <laughs> oh, he did not. But how do they know? All I did was walk in and said hello, best behaviour. But they just know breeders, they can smell it. <laughs> breeders. <laughs> and that's just the beginning. Because then he takes me into the library. And he said, I thought, perfect job for you. Make a start in here. Removing inappropriate material. Like Section course. 28. Clause 28. <laughs> we have to remove any books or material that might be promoting a homosexual lifestyle. And how vile is that? They know he's gay and they make him be the one that enacts this really homophobic piece of legislation. I believe Section 28 wasn't actually repealed until the early 2000s. I think 2003. Don't quote me on it. I was in secondary school after it was repealed, but even I can't recall ever getting any form of, of, of health or sexual education around LGBT issues. Everybody's still pretending that nobody was gay. Wrong. Pistol space. something wrong with your skin so this is more evidence that the illness is clearly progressing it makes me think of the last music video that freddie mercury did and you can see the impact that the virus had on his skin and just his entire body and the level of frailty that the illness caused freddie mercury was still incredible though martin pasco please he's using a fake name again the shame nobody wants people to find out i've had a look and the result seems to be definite. I'm sorry to say you've passed the threshold into a diagnosis of AIDS. Do you know what that means? Yes, I do. 
I'm pleased he finally went and got a test because knowledge is power. I know there wasn't a treatment at this time, but keeping yourself well, keeping yourself safe, making sure you don't pass it on to other people, but even having the opportunity to prepare for the, the decline and even to have the opportunity to have some decent palliative care if it's not going to be treatable is important. Now they talk about the threshold to AIDS. So for the most part, when somebody has HIV, we measure two main things. One is the viral load, the amount of copies of this virus. And that's where people talk about being undetectable, when the viral load is suppressed so much by treatment to the point that the tests and the technology that we use can't detect any of it. For people that are undetectable, there has never been a reported case of transmitting the virus to somebody else. Undetectable means untransmittable. The other thing that we measure is something called your CD4 count. The CD4 cells are a type of immune cell. I think of them as kind of the conductors of the immunological orchestra. They don't do the hard graft and get rid of the bugs themselves, but they coordinate all the other parts of the immune system to target bugs, cancers, all different types of things in a very sophisticated and coordinated way. Normal CD4 count is usually somewhere between 500 and 1500. When it drops below 200, that's where you cross the threshold into a diagnosis of AIDS, meaning that you're particularly susceptible to lots of different types of infections. Colin would have loved that suit. Yeah. Oh, Colin. I miss Colin. It's for him, all of this today. Yeah. Well, I lived with Colin. In this room. I lived with him and I loved him. And I watched him get up and go to work and phone his mum and behave. All his life, all he ever did was behave and what happens? He died. So I'm getting out of here, Jill. You can wave your flags all you like, but I'm moving up. It's amazing how grief gets channeled in different ways to different people. You can kind of almost think of it in a bit of a fight and flight way where Jill is about fighting against the marginalisation of queer people by protesting. And Roscoe is flighting and just trying to get away from the situation that he's in by elevating himself and his social status out of it. It's a non-violent protest and we can't lose sight of, of what type of protests have happened in the gay rights movement. Remember, Stonewall was a riot. It wasn't a peaceful protest. Stonewall was a big turning point in terms of the gay rights movement. But this is peaceful and it's important that we as a society still condone and still support the right to peaceful protest. We've kind of seen it with COVID. A new illness comes along and then straight away, obviously, what we need to try and do is find a treatment. Here, Pharma did do that. They found AZT or Zodovudine that we already spoke about. The drug was created. The drug was found to be safe, but the drug wasn't rolled out, kind of based on money and cost. We're gloving up. Hopefully I shouldn't need to say this in this day and age. You cannot get HIV just from touching somebody that has HIV. Don't, 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 no, come here. No, you can't touch me because I'm bleeding. That's where there is a risk. So if you've got a cut and they've got a cut and one person has got HIV, that's where blood tr transmit the virus between you. Jimmy. because I wanted to see you or to tell you. I thought, how am I going to get them all in the one place? And here you are. All my mates. Who are you? Liam. Liam. Not exactly the ideal way to tell people, but the constant secrecy fuels the shame. I've been wanting to tell you for a really, really long time. And I know I fucked things up because I didn't know how to say it, but it's actually really, really simple because I've got some news for you. I've got news for you all. I wanted you to be the first to know. I'm going to live. And that bit of hope is so powerful. It can be motivating yet provocative at the same time. Thanks for watching this one. If you haven't, make sure you watch the first three episodes too. And I'll have another video up watching the last episode very soon.